As we all know, there are many different kinds of animals in our world, and um, <laughs> they range from um, awesome animals like these here, meerkats uh -huh. and horses and grasshoppers and owls to rather weird animals like the star-nosed mole and the this <laughs> and this also and the blobfish oh, nice. <laughs> and, oh uh, well yes <laughs> um, to cute animals uh, well it's both weird and cute I think um, yeah. <laughs> this is a fennec fox. Um, right. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, um, so to classify animals, right? Their um, good old Carl Linnaeus came up with a very uh, handy dandy method, and he I said Carl Linnaeus came up with uh, the uh, binomial nomenclature, which consists of the genus and the species. It's written in italics. The genus here is capitalized, and the species is um, not capitalized, ever. An example of this is Homo sapiens, which is us. Um, now, to very much accurately classify all organisms into like a hierarchy, um, there are, you have to, you have to, you have to sort them into, um, well, I forgot the domain, but there's a kingdom. <coughs> Um, the phylum, <coughs> the class, the order, the family, the genus, and the species. I had some fun with the transitions. Um, a good, great way to remember this, this is, um, as provided to us by uh, BioNinja, is King <laughs> Philip comes over for great sex. <laughs> right. I think that's a very handy thing method, so let's all just uh, repeat that one more time together, everyone, right? King, King. Philip comes over for great sex. <laughs> Alright, um, now, in our syllabus, we also have to know uh, five different phyla, and we have to be able to classify them and give examples and you know, generally describe them as, as part of our course syllabus. And so these are, well actually no, this is just another example. This is how you classify Homo sapiens, Animalia being the kingdom, Cordata being the um, phylum, Mammalia being the, well, order, no, class. <laughs> Primates is the order, Homidae, Hominidae is the family, Homo is the genus, and Sapiens, sapiens is the species. Um, so to cl these, these, um, Five that we have to know are periphera, which um, are sponges. They have they're asymmet asymmetrical. They have no mouth or anus, and some defining features is that they have pores throughout their body. An example of them are the sponges. Now, <laughs> some interesting facts about sponges. Normal sponges, they kind of to get their nutrients, they kind of slurp out bacteria and other single-celled organisms through specialized cells with tiny hairs that are. Um, are whip, kind of whipped around to create a current to kind of get as many single-celled organisms by the sponges, and that's how they eat their food. But what I found found out was that there's actually uh, carnivorous sponges, which have long branches of tiny microscopic hooks um, on them that capture very small crustaceans, and they then kind of suck out their insides with enzymes to leave behind only husks. So watch out for uh, killer sponges. <laughs> then we have Nidaria, which are the jellyfish. They have radial symmetry, as you can see. Um, they have a mouth, but no anus. Um, a, a defining feature is that they may have tentacles, and you know, examples are the jellyfish and the anemones. Now, a fun fact about jellyfish: the largest jellyfish ever recorded was a lion's mane jellyfish in 1870 in Massachusetts Bay, and uh, in diameter it was 2.3 meters, so like more taller than your dad. Um, <laughs> and then in the tentacles were 35 meters long, so that's like. 14 year dads, <laughs> which is scary. Um, yeah, look at that. I don't know how real this picture is. It seems a little exaggerated. Oh, holy but, yeah. That is so scary. That is a lion's mane jellyfish. Um, here's another picture. This is 
mean, it could be really big, it could be really small, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right, all right, next, the other phylum that we have to know are the platyhelminthes. Now these, I'm sorry for this text, it's very hard to, this picture is not good for text. Um, they have bilateral symmetry, and uh, they also have a mouth but no anus. Now some defining features are that they have a flat and softened body, and they are super creepy looking, and they look way around like that. And examples are flatworms and tapeworms. Now, tapeworms are really, they're just, they're mean things. They live inside humans as parasites, right, in your digestive tract. And the longest one of the species, Diphylobothrium latum, was found inside a human and was about 25 meters long, which is not surprising because apparently they grow at a rate of one centimeter an hour. So that's creepy, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> And they can live inside you for 25 years or more, so they don't really kill you, but you can have, like, problems, for sure. <laughs> um, next we have the Annelida. These are earthworms, and they also have bilateral symmetry. They have a mouth and an anus, wow. and a segmented body. Examples are earthworms and leeches. And um, as you might know, earthworms are hermaphrodite, as in they have both female and reproductive cells. Now, they do produce both sperms and eggs, but they have to, they can't, you know, kind of do their own little asexual thing. They have to, um, they need another warm sperm or, or egg, you know, to, 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 to complete the fertilization. And um, they are known throughout history. Cleopatra declared them as sacred, and Aristotle just titled them as the intestines of the soil. And after 39 years of research, Charles Darwin called them the most important part of the world. Now, just think about that. Um, Next we have mollusca. Um, they also have bilateral symmetry. They also have mouth and anus. And examples of their features are that they have a muscular foot, which is this, and they can have shell, like that. Now examples of these are squids, slugs, and snails. Um, giant squids, they kind of float around in the bottom of the ocean, and they can be up to 13 meters long, which is also pretty scary. It's not as quite scary as the jellyfish. But um, there's also venomous snails. So all of these can pretty much kill things, which are just, it's, it scares me. And they kill their prey with using harpoon tooth um, and others which besiege a muscle until it opens its shell. Now these predator snails, they can hunt their prey following its scent through rivers and up trees until the prey has fallen. I don't know how fast this happens, <laughs> but it's still pretty scary. Um, now when they live, uh, sea living slug, slugs actually eat jellyfish um, only to collect, collect their nettle cells and use them for their own defense. So, uh, guys, no, no playing around in nature. Then, last but not least, we have Orthopoda. Again, they have bilateral symmetry, a mouth and an anus, and defining features are their jointed appendage, appendages and their exoskeleton. Now, examples of these are spiders, crustaceans, and insects. They're known as the most successful group of any organism, pretty much, due to their versatile skeleton, their um, the process of metamorphoses, and their um, metameric body structure, which basically just means that they have lots of, you know, parts to them. Um, now this is mostly because of the group known as insects. There are so many of them. Scientists um, estimate that about 30 million species um, are alive today, and we've only identified about 1 million so far. So, yeah, that's a hell of a lot. Um, finally, if we want to, <laughs> to organize all of these, lovely little species, we can use something called the dichotomous key, which I'm sure all of you remember how to do. Um, I'm just going to go through this as an example. This also has flowers and plants on it, so if anyone's doing plant phyla, you might do the same picture. But if we were to, for example, use arthropoda, and we try and classify it through dichotomous key, we'd ask ourselves, is the organism a plant, or is it not a plant? Um, I, it's not a plant, so we'd go to question five. Question five is, does it have an asymmetrical body plan or symmetrical body plan? Um, well, it has a symmetrical body plan, so we go to question six. Actually, no, it has an eight. Yeah, 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 symmetrical body plan. Go to question six. Then we ask, has, does it have radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry? Um, it has bilateral symmetry as an arthropod, so we go to question seven. Does it have an anus or does it not have an anus? It does have an anus, so we go to question eight. Then we ask ourselves, does it have a segmented body, or does it have no visible body segmentation? And finally we know, yeah, it's an arthropod, and we're done. And that's our presentation. Bye.